Whitman. I'm Dr. Glenn Reeves, and I'm speaking on behalf of Coastal Immunology, a immunology service on the central coast of New South Wales, Australia. Um, and this is directed dominantly to my concerned patients who have been uh, um, flooding us with calls, understandably expressing concern about the pandemic uh, situation. I should emphasize that I'm an immunologist, not an epidemiologist, not an infectious disease physician. And so this is very much a perspective from that point of view. First, by way of background, as you know, COVID-19 is a coronavirus disease. Corona meaning it's got a, a crown-like appearance. First discovered uh, in the current setting in November, or December of 2019. It's caused by the agent SARS-CoV-2 because of its similarity to the coronavirus that caused the SARS epidemic back in 2002. A prominent theory goes that there was some genetic exchange of viruses between animals in a wet market where the uh, disease was first recorded in Wuhan province, China, perhaps between a bat and an armadillo-like creature, but it then jumped to a human and subsequently there has been the human to human spread and growth of the disease that we have seen. Um, because of a lack of preparedness, it's not surprising that the mortality rate early on in this condition was alarming and frightening, but somewhat more reassuringly, we have seen a reduction of the mortality rate to around one to 2%, which is still not um, a, t a trivial outcome and is 10 times the mortality rate that we see with the seasonal annual influenza bug. But another cause of good news is that the rate of new cases in China and South Korea have slowed and this is partly attributable to a combination of quarantine, um, thorough testing of the population, preparedness of the healthcare system, and of course, the rigorous practice of hygiene and social distancing. The virus, as you know, is spread by respiratory droplets, um, displaced by coughing or sneezing, often onto a surface, which is then touched and transferred to uh, the infected individual. It is therefore very important that we exercise the do not touch your face policy, particularly avoiding the T zone of the eyes, nose and mouth. And we must practice good respiratory hygiene if we weren't already, which means covering our mouth and nose if we're coughing and sneezing, often an elbow uh, bend is sufficient and good practice. There should also be adequate social distancing and the recommended uh, gap between individuals is anywhere between one and a half and two meters. Regular hand washing with soap and water or with an alcohol-based gel is of course critical and regular cleaning of surfaces that are touched by large numbers of people should also be employed. The symptoms of the coronavirus include shortness of breath, cough, which is often dry, uh, nasal congestion and running, and shortness of breath. 80% of people, or four out of five, have minimal or no symptoms. We've all struggled through a flu-like syndrome or a common cold, and we got through it with little in the way of disturbance. And it's probable that the people who've been labelled as non-symptomatic in the COVID story have had some mild symptoms, but they've pushed through and they've become immune. Uh, it's only about one in six individuals who will need some sort of medical help, medical supportive care. Um, and as you know, there's no specific vaccine or antiviral agent, but supportive measures 
are available and these will become particularly important for that small unfortunate proportion, about 5% who uh, require intensive care treatment for complications like uh, respiratory distress syndrome or septic shock. Uh, the diagnostic tool is a genome detection system called RT-PCR, which can be performed on a swab from the uh, nasal region uh, and which is usually available within a period of 48 to 72 hours, although the turnaround time is rapidly improving, making more immediate testing uh, possible down the track. Um, it is important if there are symptoms of a respiratory illness to check for common things like influenza itself or the panel of 14 other common respiratory pathogens that can be looked for. In order to minimise risk, uh, it's important to obviously not travel to areas which have been affected by COVID um, virus and also to avoid large crowds. Now the cutoff number that's been put forward is 100. This is clearly arbitrary. Some corporate services are already limiting meetings to 10 to 15 people. Um, there will be some adjustment of policies in due course. Uh, the maintenance of a one and a half to two metre distance between individuals uh, will be recommended. And as always, avoiding touching the face, practicing respiratory hygiene, washing the hands, and um, uh, wiping surfaces are important. Uh, you may be worried about appearing rude by not shaking hands, but the avoidance of these social niceties is uh, essential in the current climate. Um, if uh, you are out there wondering, do I go to work, do I go to school? Uh, if there are no symptoms, the current approach is to carry on as usual and to maintain your normal work um, situation unless advised otherwise by line management or obviously by any health department advisory that may become apparent because this is clearly in a state of flux. Uh, it's clear that if you are feeling unwell, then you should socially isolate, and this means staying at home. And if you start to feel unwell uh, with fever, shortness of breath or cough, then seeking medical attention is important. Ideally, first calling ahead to detail the nature of the process uh, and even uh, considering some form of teleconferencing contact as a first point of call. Uh, this may help to screen out cases that are obviously not due to the uh, COVID-19. Uh, all of the, our decisions will require a logical evidence-based approach, which must always accord with the latest public health advice. Um, if you think you have been in contact with someone suffering from COVID-19 uh, or if you know you've had contact with such a person, then you must self-isolate. There are many grey areas uh, which exist and so blanket answers cannot always apply and in special circumstances where there are questions then they should be directed towards the appropriate people, be they line managers or health, public health authorities. Um, a particular area of comment from the immune point of view is that uh, you may have been uh, prescribed an immunosuppressive agent or you may indeed have immunosuppression as a consequence of cardiac or respiratory disease or malignancy. You may be on a, con a drug such as Celsept or mycophenolate, um, prednisone, methotrexate, all of which suppress the immune system. We would, as a general rule, suggest that you not unilaterally cease such therapy out of fear of becoming infected. 
Indeed, all decisions about therapy should be made in close contact with your local doctor. It is possible that the time may be approaching where therapy could be worn, withdrawn or drawn back, but sudden cessation of therapy is not appropriate. Uh, similarly, if you are a patient who needs intravenous immunoglobulin, a gamma globulin preparation that replaces antibodies missing from your body, you should continue to attend for those because even if you are going into a public hospital setting, there are appropriate hospital um, uh, infection control measures in place. So in summary, I would suggest that you keep your vaccinations up to date. Remember that influenza season is coming. We do not want people suffering from two bugs at once. I would encourage you to keep updated uh, on your latest public health advice. Use uh, good hand hygiene, good respiratory hygiene practices, avoid unnecessary contact with large groups of individuals, don't touch your face, and perhaps most importantly, remember that this is a challenge shared by all of us and we should work by cooperating rather than competing. All the best.